So I created a video on custom attributes just the other week. And in that video, I showed a base editor that you derived from and that would enable you to set headers and descriptions to display on your inspector. And that was all via a custom attribute on any component. And that was super neat, right? Well, in this video, I wanted to show a trick that might not suit everyone. But after showing a developer friend of mine, I guessed I might as well spin up a video for it and show all you people as well. So here is a trick to build one editor to rule them all. So what do I mean by one editor to rule them all? Well, what if I told you I could create a custom editor that literally took on all of your components? Well, let me show you how to do it. And first off, we're gonna jump into this scene. It's a good looking scene. It's Alien Planets Volume 3, and I'll link in the description to the asset store if you fancy picking it up after this. But we're gonna use it for our little experiment here. So, what are we gonna do? Well, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a base editor very similar to what we did last time, but with a slight twist. So, base editor, and we're open up in Visual Studio, there we go. And we know it derives from the editor, which is from Unity Editor Library, and it's not a model behavior, we'll get rid of all this rubbish. Okay, excellent. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to just pop in a little label just so we can see if this is actually working. And I'll do some more cleaner, neater stuff to display momentarily. But at the moment, we're just gonna come in here and we're gonna say base editor, so that we know this is gonna work or not. So, as all the editors, if you've seen my video, you come in here and you go type of, and this is where this changes. Usually, I would have created a component, let's say a tree, and I'm gonna create a tree component in a moment. And then in here, I would say, this is a custom editor for type of tree, and I'd call this tree editor. And then we'd put in all the inspector GUI for the tree. And that's great and all, but maybe I don't wanna do that. This is gonna be the one editor to rule them all. So what about if I came into here and typed in mono behavior, and everybody that knows Unity quite well, their ears might be pricking up right now and thinking, can you do that? Well, yes, you can, it's a, it's a trick, and that's the point. Now it's not for everybody and there'll be some gotchas that I'll show you momentarily, but you can actually type this. And what it will do is it'll say, this is the custom editor for all mono behaviors. So anything that derives from mono behavior will get this unless it has its own custom attribute. And again, I'll show you a little trick for that in a moment. But this is the extra part. Under here, you have several attributes you can actually set and one of these attributes is called editor for child classes. And what that does is if it's true, the child classes for the inspector type will also show for this editor. So all those child classes will pick this one up. And what we do is in here, we just type in editor for classes and say, yep, that's true. So now let's jump back here to Unity and we'll let it reload. And in our scripts, we will create a C sharp script and our C sharp script, as I said before, is gonna be called tree. And we'll select this thing. I'm pretty sure it's a tree. And we'll drag and drop our component onto here. And there you are, straight away we can see it. There is base editor, the thing that we wrote inside our on inspector GUI. And we haven't written a custom editor for this. What it is is the tree derives from monobehavior. And this base editor works for all monobehavior. And that's how that works. This is the little trick on how to actually make one editor to rule them all. Now, with the power of video editing, what I've done is I've actually taken the base editor and I've used the code from the previous video. And I'll leave a link in the description. All this code is in there and I talk all the way through it on what it does and how it works. And this is just so I can show something a little bit better than this terrible little base editor label. But what it has is we have the header GUI and we have the get component attribute. This is using reflection to find out if the component attribute is added to any of our classes, any of our components that is, and this one will draw it. And this just checks that when we do the enable, which happens when you play or edit or when you pick the component itself in the inspector, this says, is there that component attribute? Let's use it. But as I say, check out the video for more information. But what we'll do here is we'll just replace this with the header GUI. 
There we go. So if I save that and I go into my tree and I add onto here components, let's say tree, a tree you can interact with. There we go. Very, very simple. And if I jump back into Unity, I've got the component attribute class there. And again, that's in the previous video. Now, if I pop on and I select my tree, you can see that's much better. So we can see this actually working. There's the header and there's the description. And that's great, right? Well, not entirely. There is a gotcha to this particular trick. If we look in our scene and we go to our canvas, you'll also notice the graphic raycaster which is an R component, has actually been highlighted also. It's got the title there. So that's because this component, which comes from Unity, does not have its own custom editor. So it gets ours instead. Basically what it's doing is it go, it's, it's going, have I got a custom editor? No, but there is this custom editor for the mono behavior. And I derive from mono behavior. So I use this custom editor. And therein lies the rub with this editor trick. So I'm going to label this trick as buyer beware. It will affect other components. So think about what you're doing when you start adapting or using this base editor. For instance, if you start adding buttons or you start putting in zones on the inspector or you start adding all this fancy stuff, that may affect components that you don't control, that aren't in your preview. So what can we do about that? Well, there is another little trick to stop this from happening. So let's jump back into our code. If we pop into our base editor, we can see that onEnable gets the component. What if onEnable said, is this your actual component I wanna get? What if it said, is this actually from the Unity namespace? Do I want this one? Well, let's, let's just do that. So string, Target namespace was target dot get type dot namespace. What we'll do is we'll say this actually exists. Oh. Too quick for my own good. There we go. And we'll say Put a boolean up here, little flag. Full M is Unity namespace. It's false. And then in here we'll go is Unity namespace. And we'll say, okay, does this target namespace, does it start with Unity? And then what we can say is only do this if we're not the Unity namespace. So now I save, I come back into Unity. There we go. And as we can see, the graphic raycaster doesn't actually do it anymore, but it still happens for our tree. And if you don't know what namespaces are, I'll leave a link in the description telling you what they do, but I'm just gonna show you a little extension now to show you what namespaces are in general it's a bigger topic for this video, so go and check it out afterwards. But what if we said, okay, that's great, but it's gonna start coming up for all these other namespaces. I've brought this package in and it's got these scripts, etc. Well, that obviously is gonna be its own problem. They're gonna start highlighting if they don't have their own custom editors. So what if we said, actually, we just wanna do this for our own scripts that happen to be under our own namespace. Well, again, we'll pop into Visual Studio, we'll say M is warped namespace. And if you're wondering where the term warp from, then you might want to check out my name, which is warped imagination. So warped imagination is what the target namespace, oh, that's why it's not coming in, there we go. And we're gonna see warped imagination. Great, so I'm only going to do this for our own namespaces. Now, let's, let's make something a little bit special here. If we're under our namespace, maybe we want to have 
maybe you want to use this for all elements that aren't from Unity, all components that aren't from Unity, but you know that could capture other scripts, etc. And we, we do want to highlight them in the editor because it's a nice to have a nice big name and description. But when there are scripts, we want that little something extra. We want to show a logo. We want to show our logo whenever it's that. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll do texture 2D and we're going to grab our logo. We're going to make it static because if it's used elsewhere, why get it again and again and again? And then logo GUI here. And we're going to say if with the warped imagination namespace, then make our little logo. And in here, we're going to say if If this doesn't exist yet, then we're going to go and get it. And this is going to be MS logo equals. And we're going to grab this from the asset database and we're going to load asset at path. And this is going to be a texture 2D. OK, so what that does is it basically goes into the asset database and collects the texture 2D we're interested in and sets it to the logo. And we just need to use a path for that. And there you go. I got that off screen while I was talking. And then we'll say, OK, if we've got our logo, so if it doesn't equal null, then let's let's do something with it. So we'll add a little bit of space because we're doing this after everything. So we don't want it to just butt up against everything else. And this is going to be in its own. So we're going to begin horizontal and we're going to close that straight away. Yeah, it's a GUI layout dot end horizontal. And we're going to want the reason we're using the horizontal here is we're going to want it all the way to the left. So let's just GUI layout flexible space in there and GUI layout dot label. And if you didn't know, this is how you put logos in your inspector. You just whack that in there. And I've already added this texture. So if I save that now and come back out and go into Unity. There we go. So it's not coming up yet. And the reason for that is that tree is not in the namespace. So we come into the tree and let's make that in a namespace. So Walt Imagination. And you better spell it right, otherwise this thing will not work and you'll be wondering why. So there we go. Save that, come back into Unity. And we press on our tree and there you go. A little W logo has come up. So now if I was to add a new script, new behavior script, and we'll just keep that as that. And let's say I just add that to the tree as well. Oh, didn't add. Let's try that again. There we go. Finally added. OK, so that's got our header but it doesn't actually have our logo. And that's because it isn't under the warped imagination namespace. So that's great. Now we could add in more buttons and all the rest, and it will just happen for our namespace. If we limit it to that, it won't come onto the Unity namespace, etc. But will this mean you never need to create another custom editor? Well, no, of course it won't. This is a very generic custom based editor that you could set up custom attributes. And it can work as your base, but you'll still want to derive from it and add extra stuff on. For instance, let's say I had states that were displayed for my AI creature that happened to be wandering through my world and I was going to meet and fight with. Well, if I'm showing those states in the inspector as some sort of debug sort of option, then I want to see that in a different way than maybe a custom attribute will actually display. Maybe I also want to be able to press on that and that state will take me to my state editor, which is a big state system that I can play with. So there's still the need for custom editors that will derive from this, or maybe not derive from this, that we'll need to build in our world. But with this trick, we can develop a little bit quicker and we can develop a little bit easier and it will make our designers lives a little bit happier than they were before because we can quickly add in buttons we can quickly add in titles and descriptions without having to go and create another class another custom editor class that will just take us extra time or maybe we don't have that time 
to do all that, well, I don't know what you're doing if you can't make time for that, but at least now you can quickly add in attributes to do those things for you and your designer can still benefit from having all those custom buttons and custom headers, etc. Now, if you enjoyed this video, you know what to do. You hit the like, you make sure you subscribed, and you also visit the Ko-Fi page, which is a link in the description. And as always, thanks for watching.